once again, sorry about the technical delays, um, but it seems like we have everything working now. So without further ado, this is the special weather briefing for Friday, April 17th, 2020. Uh, I'm Dylan Lusk uh, here at the National Weather Service in Peachtree City slash Atlanta. Um, so we'll be talking today uh, pretty much entirely about the potential for severe weather on uh, Sunday, April 19th. Uh, overnight into Monday on April 20th. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we'll start with kind of the main points that we're gonna hit on. Obviously, like I said, we've got a severe threat Sunday into Monday. Um, it's gonna feel, I said this yesterday in the, uh, the regular briefing, it feels like we've got a little bit of deja vu going on here. We've got a low pressure system that's gonna be forming to our west uh, and Throughout the day, basically, um, we'll have warm air that gets kind of uh, moved up into the area. And with that, we'll have the potential for some severe weather starting um, basically in the evening hours, moving into the overnight. Um, we'll kind of have a potential for two rounds and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. One thing I do wanna emphasize from the start, uh, this setup so to speak is a little bit different from the setup last Sunday. Um, it is not quite as potent uh, and it's a little bit further south and so because of that our greatest threat is going to be located over central Georgia as a result. Um, that isn't to say that the threat for the rest of our area so north Georgia say the Atlanta metro area and points on north uh, the threat there is not zero by any means um, and we'll talk about that a little bit as to why that is uh, in a bit um, but um, for now uh, at least further north we're more concerned about the potential for a flooding threat whereas over central Georgia we'll have a threat of flooding damaging winds tornadoes and hail uh, with this so here is the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for Sunday uh, this is their day three outlook so we once again similar to last week have a enhanced risk. Uh, you can think about that as being a level three out of five uh, located over, in this case, it's gonna be over central Georgia. So we've pretty much got all of central Georgia from pretty much points uh, just south of the Atlanta metro area on down. So that's gonna include Macon, Columbus, those areas. Uh, the metro and I-20 corridor are in a slight risk. And then, so that's a two out of five and then we have a marginal risk. You can think of that as a one over five over the rest of our area. So like I said, the severe weather threat isn't zero for this to the north, but we do see it at least right now as being a little bit lower. Um, the timing of this, uh, still Sunday late afternoon into the, uh, or late evening, or sorry, late afternoon into the evening and then into early Monday. And our main threats, we've got a chance at everything with this. So damaging winds, tornadoes, flash flooding, and some hail. Here's a kind of breakdown of the percentages that the SBC gives us. Um, you'll note that we have that hatched area once again out at day three. Um, that doesn't happen too, too often. Same with a 30% chance severe. Um, so there is a decent amount of confidence uh, that we're going to see some kind of uh, severe threat uh, you know, move through central Georgia with this. Uh, just to remind you that hatched area is for significant severe uh, chances. And so here we're gonna define significant severe, at least for this event, we'd expect potentially for, uh, potentially for us to have wind gusts over 70 miles per hour, or we could see some strong long track tornadoes though, for this risk at least, and at, at the moment, and everything is of course subject to change with these later forecasts, but at the moment, we'd be a little more concerned about those wind gusts over 70 miles per hour. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the timing for these storms. So um, what I have here is uh, kind of the simulated radar for Sunday into Monday morning um, for you from one specific model. It's always important to put out and say that this is just one model. Um, and it's just one run of one model. This particular model runs every six hours. So, um, you know, the output does change. So don't use this to say, you know, or to expect, you know, I'm gonna get thunderstorms at exactly this time or anything like that, all right? 
Um, we're just trying to give you a general idea of kind of what it looks like. And so what this shows is as it restarts here, you'll see we have some early morning showers over northern Georgia, and then we kind of have a main line that comes in later in the evening. And so with this, we're going to talk about two possible rounds that we see. Um, what I just said was that second round, so that's right about here. You see we get a line that forms towards central Georgia that's associated with a cold front that's moving through. And so that line of storms could have our damaging winds and have a chance for some brief tornadoes. Um, the first round doesn't show up as well right now, at least in this model, and we'll talk about why that is. But the first round we could see is kind of uh, late afternoon into early evening on Sunday. And that will be a threat for some isolated, what we would call supercell thunderstorms. And so those would have all hazards associated with them. We could potentially see hail from those, we could see damaging winds, and we could see tornadoes with those. So let's talk about that first uh, round and the timing uh, for the storms with that. So in the afternoon, going into the evening hours over central Georgia, um, so I'll kind of highlight it for you right Right here, uh, this area kind of, uh, unfortunately my pen doesn't want to work, sad. So this area right in here though, in central Georgia, um, you can see we have, this is uh, basically Cape, you can think of it as instability or the ability for air to be able to move upwards, which is always good for thunderstorms, the more that you have. And so we have what we would consider, especially for these parts, to be a decent amount of instability through central Georgia. And I don't show it here, but we also, during this time period, have a decent amount of shear. And so we talked about this a little bit last week, but um, two of the big things that we need for severe thunderstorms are um, instability and wind shear. And so when we have those two things, um, we've got a chance at some very, very strong thunderstorms, but we have to get those thunderstorms to form in the first place. And that will kind of be the question um, and where we have right now a lot of uncertainty. So um, this model in particular right now actually in this run doesn't show a lot in terms of thunderstorms during the Sunday afternoon to uh, evening time period. So we'll say around 4 to 8 p.m. And um, even though we have really good parameters in place. And so some some runs of this model we've seen these storms form uh, some we have not and so it's kind of a question of whether or not these storms form if they do um, they will have a decent chance of being um, pretty severe they'd be supercell type thunderstorms so uh, with that we could see the hail we could see the damaging winds and supercell thunderstorms are known for being uh, tornado producers so we could also see tornadoes, uh, some potentially strong if we get these thunderstorms. So we do ask you to kind of stay tuned on this. Um, this will be something as we move forward, we'll get uh, basically better, higher resolution models that are better able to kind of look at these things over time. We'll get a better idea of what's happening and we'll hopefully be able to communicate with you a little bit better whether or not we're gonna see this risk. Um, the other thing that's adding some uncertainty into the situation is um, where a warm front will be during the day. So um, you can see this is our temperatures kind of during the day on Sunday overnight into Monday. You can see down here to the south, we have very warm temperatures in the 70s and 80s. And up here in North Georgia, we've got temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And so warm, you can basically think warm air, good for storms, cold air, not as good for storms. And um, where you are with respect to this front will pretty much dictate a lot of the risks that you'll potentially see. If you're north of the front, the biggest risk we're worried about for you is flooding. Um, that isn't to say that you couldn't have some other risks, but it becomes much less likely as you get north of where this kind of line or boundary is going to be between the cold air to the north and the warm air to the south. Uh, if you're to the south, you've got a chance at everything. So strong winds, tornadoes, flooding, hail, et cetera. Um, as basically we've seen the location of this warm front in uh, the different runs of this model and of various models has been uh, kind of shifting around. So 
Sometimes it's, you know, closer up here towards just the south end of the Atlanta metro. And sometimes it's further south down towards the Columbus, Macon area. Uh, so, you know, right now we have a lot of uncertainty about the placement of that. And uh, that means we have, at least in those areas kind of in between, a lot of uncertainty about the type of risk that you'll potentially see. So that's another thing you'll need to stay tuned for. And hopefully we'll be able to better nail down for you as we go forward in time. All right, second round, um, this is basically kind of the tail end of the radar uh, or simulator radar, I should say, that I was showing you earlier. Uh, that's going to be a broken line of storms that basically will move through central Georgia. Uh, and with that, it's kind of similar to last week where we had uh, that broken line of storms that moved through, had very strong winds associated with it, um, and there was a lot of uh, wind shear in place and so uh, sometimes those storms were able to tap into that and we got, um, they were usually brief tornadoes, but um, as many of you are aware, um, even though they were brief, several of them were still very, very strong. We had the EF3 down in Upson, um, another EF3, several EF2s. So um, just because uh, this is not say a supercell threat and more of a, you know, just line of storms, that, doesn't mean that we can't uh, get strong tornadoes out of this. So keep that in mind um, going forward that we could see another overnight tornado threat associated with this. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about is rainfall. So um, this is right now our forecast rainfall for the entire state uh, shown here. And as you can see, we've got um, basically an area of kind of three inches and a pretty large area of two plus inches over pretty much covering everywhere from the I-20 corridor here all the way down south um, into the Albany area and points east. So uh, that's a decent amount of rainfall. It will come in uh, less than a 24 hour period. And so there will be a chance for flooding associated with that. Um, as a result, the Weather Prediction Center has put us under a moderate risk of basically uh, experiencing flash flooding, especially kind of in this area, kind of in the triangle between Atlanta, Macon, Columbus, and then a little bit east. But we could still see flash flooding. Uh, we still have a slight risk that basically extends over most of our area here. So we could still definitely see flash flooding outside of that. That's just kind of the highlighted area where we have a maximized risk. And that area of maximum risk will also somewhat depend on where that warm front is because areas just to the north of that warm front are where we'll likely see uh, or would expect to see some of our heaviest rain kind of continuing throughout the entire day. So here are our threat levels and our confidence, kind of a quick and dirty summary overall of what we were saying. Um, we're going to put our forecast confidence right now at about a three. So we know some severe weather is probably going to happen, but um, it's not, you know, a slam dunk or anything quite yet. There's still a lot of things about the forecast that could change uh, in terms of the timing. And then uh, we still have a lot of uncertainty in terms of that first round of storms. Um, so with that in mind, right now, we're going to put ourselves kind of somewhere between, uh, somewhere in the range of a two for our large hail, um, upper end of a three to four for our damaging winds and seeing some kind of rainfall flooding. And then a, a little bit less of a risk of tornadoes, but this probably has the most variability just because of our lack of confidence and what those first rounds of storms looked like. Uh, if we suddenly expect to see a lot of storms form in that first round, uh, you could see this change uh, and go up. All right, so just to summarize, we've got a severe threat Sunday and a Monday. Um, we're going to have the potential for isolated severe storms uh, in the afternoon slash evening, and then we've got that broken line of strong to severe storms that will move through late Sunday night, early morning. Um, right now, we're putting the greatest threat over central Georgia. Uh, that's the area where we have our enhanced risk and where we have our hatching uh, for potential significant se severe weather. Uh, our main impacts, pretty much everything. We could have damaging winds, we could have tornadoes, heavy rain, and it's not quite as big a threat, but we could also have uh, the potential for some hail with these storms. 
So we will do uh, definitely be keeping in touch with you guys. Um, we'll have an additional email early Saturday morning, uh, and then we'll do a special webinar again tomorrow at 2 p.m. So look forward for that. Um, we may do one Sunday. It's not set in stone yet as to whether or not we will do one on Sunday. We will kind of uh, see how things are going tomorrow and play that one by ear as to whether or not we feel like we need it. But no matter what on Sunday, we will definitely be transitioning over to our warning operations and kind of staffing up. And so at that point, we'll begin to um, talk to you guys in real time over NWS chat as well as through social media. And so with that, um, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to uh, give us something here in the chat. Uh, otherwise, here's our number. Uh, you can always call and talk with one of us. Uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. So, and we'll also get this upload, uh, uploaded to YouTube soon. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll take your questions if you've got them.